Hello and welcome to part three of fixing this uh, BSA Lightning project gun. Thanks for uh, coming along and uh, sticking with me this far. So, in the last episode, the gun was back together, ready for testing, and then didn't work. So I had to look into it and I found out that the cocking linkage was broken, which is this item here. Thank you very much, Nibs, for sending me out the uh, replacement one. So the part that had broken, we open up the packaging and get it out. Once again, being prepared is always a good thing with YouTube videos and learning as I go along. Please drop comments with suggestions, anything like that. If you don't like the video, by all means do a thumbs down, but just tell me why. You know, give me a reason. Anyway, the part that's broken is this little bit here. Snapped off. Thanks, BSI. BSI stroke gamo. Nice one. Nice one. Thanks. Yeah. Found that out when I put it back together. Yeah, didn't work. Brilliant. Thank you. So, let's take her apart. Now, I won't take you along for taking the gun apart again. Just uh, have a look at part one and you'll see how to strip the gun down, ready for swapping out this linkage. So, with the magic of YouTube, there we go. She's all apart. So, uh, as you can see, gone. Yeah, and uh, bits of it actually ended up in the cylinder. Let's hope that didn't do any damage. But uh, if it did, well, this gun's going where it belongs, in the bin. So let's get this part off. Uh, I mean, remove it from the gun. Or not get it off. Um, uh, any parents watching this with kids, uh, I'll leave it to you to explain that one. So what you want to do is knock out this pin here. Now you can see on these, one side it's actually flush, and the other side it's low. And that little bit that I mentioned last time has just fallen off again. I completely forgot about that. Let's uh, let's put that safe. There we go. So yeah, so you want to what you want to do is tap it out from the low side, because that's the side that doesn't have the uh, serrated teeth to actually seat it. So let's get that tapped out. Let's see how we get on. Being brave here, tapping it out on my uh, plastic stand. She's out. So, uh, in focus and in shot. See the little serrations there? You have to make sure they go on the right side. So when you put it back in, Make sure that you insert it plain end first into the side that has the serrations in the hole. Uh, they're probably not going to be able to pick them up on the camera, but uh, that's what you need to do. So uh, we'll get to that in a bit. So to remove, lift, pull, and out. So this is what I mentioned in one of my other videos. We've got this hole here that allows you to insert the uh, cocking arm. I'm just lifting it out. Oh, quite a nasty gore starting there. It's obviously contacting. That's uh, not good. Also kind of contradicts the previous owner's uh, story about, oh, the gun's had minimal use. Yes, it's in fantastic condition. <laughs> I think we've disproved that so far. But uh, anyway, let's get the new cocking arm and... Uh, Make the comparison. As you can see, straight away you see the new one. It's this part here, completely missing on our original. So let's get it swapped out. Those uh, steps and my wife on the gravel outside. So it would seem that I'm going to have to take a little break, do something else, and I'll be back, back with you in a bit. For me, probably an hour. For you, instantaneous. Right, I'm back. Wasn't actually that bad. Let's get this uh, cocking arm fitted. So first off, you can see this section here. Put that into the hole. Bring that up a bit closer, eh? Light it together, there we go. You can see the hole there. That section. In. There we go. Locked in place. And locate in the front, in, have a look from the side, 
it's lined up. Now sometimes if you just can't get it to line up, slide your punch in and uh, wiggle it about. There we go. And that'll usually line them up properly. So now this is what I said about. You have to slide the pin in the right way around. On this particular gun, it's on the side where the serial number is. That's where the serrations are. He says checking to make sure he's definitely putting it in the right way around. Yeah, I'm right. I've really got to get better at these videos and start practicing, haven't I? Anyway, there we go. So plain and in. Locate. Push. Now this is when the magic happens. This is when we need to tap it in. So gentle taps. Gentle. Ideally on something a bit sturdier than a piece of plastic. Tap it in. There we go. You'll know when she stops. He says. There we go. New cocking arm fitted. Right, a little link is in. What you have to do, break the gun slightly, put it in this end, pointing upwards. Use your finger to pull the grey portion of the trigger assembly forwards to give you a bit more slack. Slide the bar in and this is where it gets tricky. What it always wants to do is the end of it always wants to come out of this hole. So you have to locate it so the end's in there, but one finger behind and use something like this. This is a absolutely tiny hex key, but uh, I'm sure you could find something else. Gently push that into the hole while pushing from behind to support the plastic so then it pops back into place and actually drops down to where it should do and clicks into the plastic piece. As can be seen, if the light would actually work, you can see in there. Right, back together. Don't forget a little bit of black plastic on. Once you rest, have a rest, have a cup of tea. That's what I'd like to do. I was promised a cup of tea after helping my wife out. You know, well, that cup of tea hasn't materialised yet. A running theme in our relationship. It's uh, very vexing. Let's put the stock back on. Put the cylinder upside down. So, I like, personally, I like doing this way, lowering the stock down on, sort of see what's going on, guide it if needs be, there we go, and then what I like to do as well is ideally not throw the bolt somewhere where I then can't find it. Stay tuned. Found that. Wonderful. I like to put the rear bolt in a few turns before I then attach the front to get it located at the back. I don't fully tighten it at the back. Then forward stock bolts which are hex there we go not that one it's too small not that one I love this sort of game I say I love I mean hate Goldilocks there we go find them in Get it also as its seats. And 
that way. Not fully tightening one side and not the other side. Just a bit, do a bit on the back. And hopefully your gun should sit nice and central then and it's stuck. Don't be disturbed with the rear stock bolt. Now you'll feel a sort of graunching sensation as it goes in. The back of that uh, machine screw, the head of it, is actually serrated. So it's uh, a little lock mechanism in there. Pretty good, quite like that. It does feel very, very odd when you're tightening it. There we go. Don't have to really go to town on the bolts. Bear in mind it's going through wood most of the time. Wood is not metal. Wood splits. Just going around. Looking even. Working it down in. Okay. It's also fit the rail that this gun should have had. is here and it's special bolt now in my previous video I said that I'd use a bolt from stock I lied um, it has to be a special one you can see it's got the little narrow part on the end of the thread there and that is to locate there into the hole on the top of the receiver Ooh, it didn't go on the floor that was lucky so that your scope rail doesn't slide under recoil. The only thing is, I have to say, it's not in the ideal location for any of my scopes. So, oh, it might just have to be an excuse for a new scope. Terrible. Just, oof. don't know about you, new scope day. Sometimes, sometimes, it's better than new gun day. Because, Usually, you spent more on the scope than you did on your gun. Shh, don't tell anyone. They're all Torx. Same size, fortunately. Again, just nip it first. And what you saw, that locating bolt at the back, was that I eyeballed it to start with to make sure it was in the right place. Then I dropped it down in. If it's not, all you're gonna do is stick a dent in the top of your action, or a nice scratch when it then moves backwards under recoil. So working from the middle out, just tight. As I've said before, you don't have to do these up ridiculously tight. Just tight. Now that we've got the gun back together, let's have a look at the old trigger unit, see if we can work out what was wrong with it, and also whether there's any areas that we can improve as we go forwards. Screw on the side. There we are. looks damaged. What 
of uh, our lovely assembly grease here. Honestly, can't see anything wrong. That's a spare, it didn't fall out of the gun again. A small spring here. Could be worth changing that to see if that decreases the actual trigger tension. And we have this spring here. That's going to be providing a lot of the actual tension. There's some grit here. You get grit. On your, the faces of your trigger, it's never going to work. Also, the actual grease is smeared off onto the side, it's not actually on the faces that engage. Always worth having a little dollop of grease on there. There we go, some more grit here. Like a little bit of the stock, actually. The more I look at this gun, the piece of dirt in it, the wear. It wasn't looked after. Look after your guns. If you look after your guns, they'll look after you. You put food on the table. Okay, well, we will come back to this to be revisited, probably in the winter. And I've got the uh, log burner installed in here and some electrics. So we've actually got lights, that would be helpful, rather than relying on the window and the LED uh, floodlight that uh, doesn't exactly have a great battery life. Yeah, we will revisit it and I will take you along for the ride. But for the moment, that's going to be it. We'll just reassemble the trigger assembly, hence why it's called an assembly, just so nothing gets lost. Pop that cover back on, it's worth just uh, holding the actual trigger blade in place. The trigger blade is plastic and it actually has a little bit of flex in it. It does account for some of the uh, sort of lack of feel. I mean, air gun manufacturers, I get it, plastic's cheap, but uh, metal trigger blades please they feel so much nicer the gun has a bigger bigger it has more of an air of quality about it they last longer honestly there can't be that much difference in price but the difference in quality is amazing and when you're a Spanish gun manufacturer trying to sell guns that are apparently British Come on. The price that the Lightning sells for, I'm sure it could have had a metal trigger blade. Really. So clumsy. As I'm trying to keep it in shot. There we go. Right. Put the cover back on as well. Keep it in place. Let's call it a day. The trigger is adjusted by this screw, which is situated behind the trigger blade. When I tried adjusting the trigger using this, it didn't adjust the weight of the trigger at all. All it did was adjust the, the length of the first stage, making it either an overly heavy trigger with a fairly short first stage, or an overly heavy trigger with a first stage that just seemed to go on and on and on and then suddenly the gun went off. What we're going to try doing is replace that screw with a longer one to see if that gives us a bit more fine tuning 
and you never know, maybe even reduce the weight a bit. Well, let's give it a go, here's hoping. When you reassemble the Lightning, don't forget the cocking arm stirrups. There are two cutouts for these, sorry, get the right place, there and there. Now, I think they only come with one. I took the precaution of ordering two because, yeah, you guessed it, mine had gone AWOL. Now, we'll get her back together, quite simply popping these into place. one and the other one will fit the same now please excuse the noise in the background of the next sequence it's the tumble dryer and I apologize I didn't realize it was going to be that loud this is the first shot after the rebuild oh my goodness the trigger is a hell of a lot better that was very much worth doing Gun still recoils, felt like it actually had some power behind it. This is looking a bit more promising.